Hello, this is Christina Wallace and today I'm going to do a demo on how to tint and tone rose leaves. Obviously before that I am going to make them, wire them, but um, this is not a tutorial because I have not settled on a style of wiring rose petals in the way I am totally um, happy with so I'm playing with different types of wiring different thicknesses of cold porcelain and so on and so forth so you would see certain faults in my leaves so no this is definitely not a tutorial I'm just playing with colors as well as everything else and I am in effect inviting you to join me in my little experiment so yes let's um let's get going So further in the tutorial I am going to very clearly label the oil paints which I used to tint this piece of cold porcelain as well as two other shades and by tinting I mean colouring the cold porcelain, the paste itself. So here I'm going to try and thin the edge of this rose leaf without disturbing the actual shape of this leaf. And I'm going to apply a little bit of petal base to both sides of my vena as I don't mind the shine on the leaves since these are not petals and it kind of keeps the cutout in place without it moving. Now I've made this vena myself and I've tried to keep it not only as detailed as possible but also as three-dimensional as I could because I find that that helps the two parts from moving from side to side and um, yeah if you just saw me adding uh, the lead, the jar lead on top of it that kind of helped to apply even pressure across. So the cutter I'm using here is not an exact match to this vein since I can't find mine which is exact match. So I'm just cutting it down a little bit with scissors just like so and um, yeah if you remember try to thin it as well a little bit and voila here we go it's ready to be wired. So this being a demo I'm not going to walk you step by step through my um, wiring process. Uh, this is a wire gauge 26. I got away with it without having to use 24 and um, yeah the idea here is for me personally is to try and keep as close to this line in the back as possible while fully wiring the whole leaf. It could be a little bit tricky um, and um, I'm just trying different This is actually a very traditional way of wiring leaves. It's um, typical for cold porcelain, not so much for sugar. And um, there are several steps to it. it. You could, if you haven't applied enough glue, you could add a little bit later. But sometimes you end up with less kind of neat finish at the top. So it's just a balance of thickness of clay, accuracy of application, and uh, in enough clay on the wire and correct way of you know of um, steps of drying it it seems that with cold porcelain it would hold even if you insert your wire not that long away in but at the same time being less resistant and kind of gummy than gum paste you would see the imprint of this wire coming through a lot easier so you have to watch that. Okay. 
Okay, this coming up are going to be three main oil paints I'm going to be using for toning. Pay attention to the backs of them and the little black and clear square symbols that are on it, just like this one. And this paint to the right is one off I'm going to be using on one of my tests. So these symbols basically mean, the black symbols mean that the paint is totally covers or almost totally covers the color underneath depending on the color obviously the totality of the cover and if the square is clear that means that the color covering your uh, shape underneath with that color would just give it a little hint of color but would not totally overrule the color underneath so let's have a little play with this interesting property of oil paints in as far as called porcelain concern and see what we make of it. So our first out of three samples of clay is tinted with the same color, this very color I'm going to now apply over the top as well and see what's going to happen. quite uh, annoyingly and boringly nothing much happens basically covering with the same color in this case at least with this density of color in cold porcelain seem to only just add a little bit of shine which is lovely but it doesn't really change the color much So before I get to my other clear paint that I use everywhere, I'm going to use this one, one of paint, I'm going to put the name in here, and it's basically because this paint seems to be darker than the layer underneath, because unexpectedly altogether my usual clear paint or transparent paint that I've been using throughout this test happen to be very similar color as the color underneath as well that was just a coincidence so I wanted to demonstrate the effect of clear paint so I've used a paint that was slightly slightly darker just to show you that it does have an effect and its effect seemed to be a, a bit like tinted clear nail varnish really and so yeah, it becomes a bit of a mix of the color over the top and the color underneath. Yeah, and just to quickly show you what happened when I used the normal clear color that I used throughout, it just hardly any difference between the clear color and the solid color that I used to cover. Don't know, just a freak accident as far as I'm concerned. Because had I chosen to keep the tinted cold porcelain underneath a little bit lighter, it would have showed up most probably. Now this is an interesting one. I am trying to get a darker color because I like dark colors on my roses and I'm adding a bit of violet color in there, this particular shade. And I found that sometimes you add a little bit of violet or red or anything and it totally changes the color but in this case this solid green is quite thirsty so I kind of kept adding and adding and adding and running out of color altogether so it's very unpredictable really how thirsty your color or rather your leaf or your surface would become it varies greatly from color to color I find yes definite result here in terms of changing colors and i am quite liking it in fact 
in fact yeah I'm liking it very much but it really depends because this darker color for rose leaves have grown in me and that's some comparison of what we've done so far now we are working with cold porcelain itself that is tinted with one of those clear squares transparent um, transparent paint and I absolutely love it it is my favorite thing to use as a base it does get a little bit darker as it dries which is typical for cold porcelain and here I'm using see-through over the top of see-through and as you could see it gives it a very gentle could be argued not very natural effect now we're going to take a very light kind of semi slightly attached transparent background and use a solid non-transparent color over it and it's an interesting thing to play with in my opinion because depending on the amount of paint you use you could get different looks and here we go again, mix of two solid colors of a light semi-transparent background and um, yes, I absolutely love it. This is my favorite in the whole bunch and how it turned out, you'll be able to see in a minute and um, yeah, I am liking this one very much as it happens. So now my final sample of tinted clay, I've used the same uh, semi-transparent background but I've really really tinted it to uh, I've added as much green as possible, like loads of green. If I'd have added any more it would have probably started to crumble, so maximum green and now I'm going to use um, just solid color over the top of it. I must admit I used to hate using solid solid color over the top of anything but then I think it really does depend on the color and here we have a mix of two solid colors and from hating solid color over the top it's kind of becoming my favorite I'm probably just going through a darker shades of green phase <laughs> so yeah I do like it very much and I'm going to do something which I've not done throughout uh, this demo is I've not added kind of pinkish edges or pinkish middle because I tried to stay away from it initially at this point but uh, yes, I'm going to have a little play with it just to amuse myself really and I'm going to add slightly off color middle and slightly off color edges and um, I must admit I am trying not to be sucker of adding too many colors in into my um, into my foliage but a little bit a little touch after going mono colors throughout this long demo yeah it's kind of cute I kind of like it So this is a final test of toning the front of my foliage and I'm just going to use a clear, the usual clear tint, clear tint, not clear tint, clear tint, clear nail varnish shall we call it, no it's not nail varnish, I'm just drawing parallels with something that everyone knows. So yeah, it gives it a nice shine, I quite like it, I think it's cute and I think I prefer the solid one in this case love to know which ones did you prefer like what did you think of the whole test would you like to see more of this did you try to play with oils yourself or what you tone with that kind of thing would be really interesting leave me a comment okay so i am going to use this little mat to really just um get some white titanium white paint on i could have used um, a tissue or a napkin you know if i'd have stole it from one of those 
trendy gastros but I haven't been to any of those recently so I'm going to use my mat and then I'm going to just wash it with soapy sponge and here you do need a really flat brush these brushes are from Primark they're about two pounds for a pack of four or five and you have to go very easy slowly and gently on this one your brush needs to be really really flat and you need to be as consistent and as even-handed uh, throughout the whole thing it does come with experience but it does work surprisingly well when you haven't done that many of these things at the same time which is a good news but you do need to have a very good veiner for that because obviously if your veiner didn't vein uh, many details on the front and back then no amount of excellent brushing flat brushing is going to give you good result you know now i am going to do practically the same as i've just done on the same shade leaf but as you could see i have added a little bit of green to my white and I just want to try out whether it's going to look any more natural and I don't actually like it. I think it's not as pronounced, it's not as dramatic and it doesn't actually apply as well, although that might be just a coincidence. So here we have that lighter, more transparent background and it really surprised me because I have spoken to my students actually the other day about how lighter background creates less dramatic effect and doesn't work as well however this particular leaf does actually contradict what I said completely and I don't know whether to be annoyed or happy about it because this is my favorite leaf and that actually coming to think of it does make me happy because you know if I like to work with this shade then all the better that it works on both sides and yes, the neat pointy edge for the wire really does work here, the wire line. Yeah, so see here, I've noticed that compared to the other leaf, this one wasn't as worked through. So I'm just fixing it. Good way to compare how well it's done. So this is the darkest one and um, I found it the hardiest to kind of a texture to apply this uh, superficial um, color to, superficial or anyway, this textureous color to and I think that probably mostly depends on, depends on how well you've used the, the mold that you have because you really have to try to press it down as consistently throughout the surface as you can and always have spares because sometimes it just doesn't come out as well as you want to and um, and if it doesn't come out well then obviously the, the texture of it isn't going to come out so yeah I expected for this to be the best the best outcome the best back so to speak but um, it's okay but it's not not the best and with something like this you could use perhaps shimmer or maybe some other little tricks I don't know worth exploring what you could do with the back of the leaves but they um, always have their own character don't they and you could really really use that So getting to this final point and having put so much effort into all of it all in all I wish I'd bothered a little bit more with my wiring obviously um, but um, hey I did want to have a, some exper experiments of my own while YouTubing for you people. So yeah here we go the three colors the three bags I do really like them this is the fixative one of my viewers found for me and it works really well uh, to fixate all of these things so yeah it's only five and hobby craft and um yeah i hope you enjoyed the tutorial please um 
share it helps me a lot please try to make this at home please comment and all of those things i won't be able to make a tutorial next week i'll probably translate something into russian but the following week i am going to make winter rose it has another fancy name but yeah winter rose let's see if i could find a picture and um yeah so make sure you stick around and have a lovely weekend